Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at E-Trailer, and today we're taking a look and installing the Demco Stay and Play Duo Proportional Braking System on a 2018 Ford Edge. There's five main components when flat towing your vehicle. First one on the vehicle side is going to be the base plate. And the base plate attaches to the frame of the vehicle and creates a solid attachment point for your tow bar to connect to. And our tow bar being the connection point between the base plate and the hitch on the RV is how your vehicle actually goes down the road. Now with that, in case of an accidental disconnect, you are going to have some safety cables that attach to your safety chain loops here that run from the hitch to the base plate. And that's just in case it's going to keep it all attached if everything was to fail. Now we also have our diode wiring, which is going to transmit the signals of your running lights, brake lights, and turn signals to your vehicle. It's all going to be done via the umbilical. Now also you have your braking system is operated by a cylinder mounted on your brake pedal that pulls towards the firewall when you put the brakes on the RV. And, but it also has a breakaway switch and that way if everything fails it's going to pull that cable and it's going to bring the vehicle to a stop so it's not rolling down the highway. And your braking system is operated by a cylinder mounted on your brake pedal that pulls towards the firewall when you put the brakes on the RV. And this one, all the brains start here at the main component or the main unit here, which we've mounted in the engine bay. And this is normal for it to live here. Now it does have our airline that runs in to our cylinder that's mounted on the pedal, as well as some electrical wires that are not only gonna tie into our G-Force controller that's gonna allow those brakes to come on as the G-Force moves, but also to our breakaway switch in the front of the vehicle. So when the brakes are applied, or if you pull your breakaway cable, you're gonna hear the compressor kick on. And we're also gonna see that the brake pedal will start applying. Now in the RV, you're gonna see the wireless coach link lighting up on the unit mounted on the dash, and that way you know when the brakes are being applied. Now the other option is the LED light that's going to live on the towed vehicle. And if you have a rear camera or a window where you can see back, that's a great way to know that the brakes are being applied on the vehicle. Now the best time to do your install of your braking system is when you're doing your base plate because you'll have your fascia off and that's going to make it a lot easier to not only mount up some of your components but also get some of your wires ran nice and clean. So you can see here we have our fascia off and I, I think the hardest part about a braking system is generally laying out the components and once you have them all laid out in the spot that you want you're really just making connections. So let's take a look at all the different components and then we'll show you where they all connect. Now the main component of the braking system is going to be our main unit here and this is where it actually has the compressor and creates that air pressure allowing that air to go through this tube to the cylinder allowing those brakes to actually apply. So this is kind of the brains of the operation. Now I mounted it on the engine cover and it does seem like it's a tight fit but it does close with the hood and I just drilled some holes and ran some zip ties through to keep it nice and secure. You can mount it pretty much anywhere in your engine bay but this is a pretty tight engine bay um, and making your connections it's a lot easier if you have it in kind of an open space. Um, so this worked really well. I couldn't really find any other options. You're not limited to just here if you can find a better spot by all means. While we're on the outside of the vehicle, we have our breakaway switch here, which has this cable and in case of an accidental disconnect, it'll pull this out and you can hear that it's going to put that compressor on. It's going to bring the vehicle to a stop and that way it's not rolling down the highway. And this just mounts to the base plate. We had a tab already there. Um, if your base plate doesn't have one, you can simply self tap it in, but you want a nice solid secure mounting point and that way when it does pull that cable, it's not pulling the whole box and the wires with it. Now mounted on our passenger side, I have our G-Force and this has wires coming out of it and it is an inertia switch. So that way when you do apply the brakes, it's going to have a mercury switch that allows it to slow or stop accordingly. So it is proportional. It also has a toggle switch to turn your system on and off. So that way when you're normally driving your vehicle, you can swap that off. The vehicle is able to slow and stop by use of this cylinder mounted up on the brake pedal, which you can see is anchored to the firewall just with self-tapping screws. And this is where that airline from our main unit feeds into. 
Now, not included with the kit, but installed on this vehicle is a brake light switch. And that's basically just a plunger that goes to the brake pedal and it knows when the pedals are being applied. And that's gonna send the signal to our wireless coach link. Or if you pick up the option with the LED indicator light, either way, that's how it makes that uh, signal to let those lights illuminate, letting the driver know that the brakes are being applied. Mounted behind our fuse panel, I have our wireless coach link zip tied up. And this is just tied into that brake light switch. And again, this sends the signal to the coach link wirelessly. Now with all of our components laid out, I'll show you the connections. Now starting with the main unit, you do have four wires coming off of that. You're gonna have a blue, a brown, a red, and a black. And your blue and brown, those are gonna feed towards your breakaway switch and tie into those wires. And the wires off the breakaway switch are gonna be in orange and black, so I ran my black to the blue wire. When I used heat shrink butt connectors on any of my connections that live in the engine bay or potentially in a spot where it could get wet, once you heat these down, they create a nice watertight seal. So I recommend picking these up. They're really nice to use, and also they make a really good connection that's not gonna become loose over time. Now our orange wire off the breakaway switch, I tied into our brown wire, and then I attached both of those to a red wire that I had extra and ran this up. And this is how we get the power to our unit. So uh, this attaches to a fuse holder, which is gonna have our 20 amp fuse, and then to our terminal. So this is how you get your 12 volt power. And I do recommend not putting your fuse in until you have everything hooked up. That way you don't have power going through it. Now our red and black are going to attach to the red and black wires that come from the G-Force. And the G-Force does have five wires coming off of it. These are two of them, so that's a nice easy connection. The other ones we have are going to be a green, a yellow, and a white. And you can see these actually feed from the G-Force controller. And we had to route this through the firewall to get the wires through, but they're gonna tie into our diode wiring. So if you are running your diode wiring at the same time, highly, highly suggest pulling up an extra loop. Um, you should have plenty, and that way you can make that connection nice and easy. Uh, we also have our ground here, which I split off using a factory ground that's located down here. So all of our wires from the G-Force were passed through the grommet. Uh, this, our airline here, our quarter inch line, also passed through the grommet. Now, normally you're gonna be tying a larger diameter hose on the one-way check valve off of here, but because this is assisted brakes, there's no booster, so you really can't tie into the line. So on vehicles like this, you leave it open to the atmosphere. You don't have to touch this at all. But let's trace this as well as our G-Force wires through our firewall, and I'll show you where they go. Now there is a perforated portion on your carpet in the footwell, and if you peel that back, it's gonna give you kind of a rectangular shaped grommet. You can peel that out, drill a hole through it, and that way you can pass everything through. It's gonna be a nice, easy way to get our wires pulled through. Now all of the G-Force wires, I simply just used some wire loom and routed that over towards the center console, where I just passed that over to the passenger side where the G-Force controller lives. You can also see our quarter inch airline tube coming through that same grommet. I just kind of routed that up uh, underneath the dash and eventually that just makes its way over to the cylinder mounted on the brake pedal. And it's a push connect fitting. Anytime that you need to make a cut on this airline tube, I highly suggest getting a tubing cutter. Uh, that way you get a nice clean cut on it because if you just used a set of crimps or something like that to splice through it, it's gonna kind of pinch that wire and you're not gonna get a good seal. So uh, just a little suggestion there. Now, some of the other wiring that we have under the dash is gonna be for our stoplight switch, as well as our wireless coach link. Now, pretty easy, our wireless coach link has uh, two wires that come off of it, and those are gonna be, uh, we can see our red here, there's also a white. Now, the white, pretty simple, I just round, a, I put a ring terminal here and mounted it up to a ground, and then our red wire is attaching to the green wire, uh, that comes off of our stoplight switch. So the stoplight switch has two wires. You can pick either one, um, but you're gonna have green wire and red wire that it comes with. So the green is just gonna go over to our wireless coach link. And then the red wire I actually extended um, into the engine bay. So that's also passing through our grommet. And then I just put that to a fuse holder before making its way to 12 volt power. And you can see I, that wire that I used running from the stoplight switch just goes to a 10 amp fuse holder. And again, just make sure you don't put your fuse in until everything's hooked up.
Now before I put wire loom and kind of tie up all of my wires and just make it look a little bit cleaner, we're gonna go ahead and test to make sure that it works. So you can go ahead, put your fuses in, and what we're gonna do is just pull our breakaway switch. We should hear our compressor come on. You're also gonna to wanna to check that the brake pedal's actuating, and if you have the wireless coach link, you should also make sure that you have it plugged into a 12 volt power source, and that way that's working. We have that connection. If you have the LED indicator light, you should have that lighting up on the dash when the brakes are applied. And if you pull a cable and nothing's working, make sure you flip that toggle switch that's on the G-Force controller. So let's go ahead and test. Once everything's working properly, you can go ahead, get everything cleaned up, get your fascia back on, hook up to all of the rest of your flat toe components, and then hit the road. And that was a look and installation of the Demco Stay and Play Duo Proportional Braking System on a 2018 Ford Edge.